Training a CNN model uh, takes a long time, especially when you have a um, huge data set, sometimes more than one week, two weeks. So in modern computer, we have a, a special processor, graphical processor unit, GPU, and uh, it can be completely useful for this type of operation that we have in this convolutional neural network. So if you have GPU on your system, the speed uh, or the training speed can be uh, become 10 times or 20 times faster. I don't have GPU on my system. Okay. When you start training, this window show you the training and testing progress. In fact, here we have the epochs. We have four epochs, iterations, and here you can see it's very low. Now it's become 40%, 60%. This is the last function, the error, and this is the accuracy. The accuracy is 86% which is not bad for, for this simple CNN by LBP and PCA and other methods. I think you achieve more than 94, 95 percent for training. I think you got uh, you uh, achieve maximum 90 percent. Yeah. What is the best accuracy of your system, Ibrahim? Uh, in, in one of the setup, we obtained uh, 99 percent for 70% uh, for training? Yes, 70. Okay. For seven, mm, this is your hog. For hog or LBP, which one? Oh, here. You got 93, 94, 95, or 94 for the average. See, this is the what I expect from your report. For different train number of uh, samples in the training, and for each of the folds and the accuracy, and then lots some figures and some shape like this one, the confusion matrix. 796, yeah, you have 9596. So, uh, this is a small uh, CNN architecture. I didn't uh, work on the options and the number of training, uh, number of layers, and also the number of filters, size of the filters. Everything should be by using trial and error, you can find the optimum setting for this uh, CNN, then it will uh, work better than your hand engineered feature descriptors like LBP or other ones. I add this, uh, the number of filters 15, 30, and 45. And also, or let me uh, keep the previous ones, the number of epochs, maybe by increasing the number of epochs, the number of times that I offered all of the samples into 20. Let's see what will be the accuracy. This learning rate should be changed. Since we have a small number of samples, so the training will be uh, performed very fast. So let's see the accuracy of this model can outperform your PCA or other methods. The blue line is the accuracy of the training. As you can see, for training, the accuracy is completely 100%, which is not good. It means that 
if the accuracy of the test is not good, it means that your system overfitted. Your system only learn the training set and it cannot generalize that uh, learned feature to the unknown or unseen samples. Okay, now we have accuracy near 90%, which is not bad. Mm -hmm. Seems that 94%, yeah, which is a completely acceptable. So by a small modification in the learning parameters, we achieve very good accuracy. From 88%, we reach to 94%. Also change this number from 30 to, for example, 3. So it means that show us the uh, validation uh, performance every three iterations. And also let me change something else. Art. For example, number of filters, let me change it. Instead of eight, Twenty See, now we can see the um, validation accuracy every three iterations. So we can see that it is improved or it is fixed. This is the last function or error function. As you can see, it is a start of four and it is decreased till near zero, which is not good because according to this error, the weight should be updated. So when you have a small error, it means that you didn't get a very good gradient value for updating the weights. And now, since I increase the number of filters, as you can see, the training speed is decreased. But it is still working in a five or two or three minutes. But as I told you, sometimes you have to run your program and get the result three weeks later, even with a very high speed computer. Okay, now accuracy is how much? 95%. It's better than the previous time, but it doesn't improve so much. Okay, do you have any questions? <laughs>